Hey everyone, I'm Chris Anderson. And I'm Dr. Rachel Bosch. And I'm Dr. Dylan Ward. We are geomorphologists at the University of Cincinnati working on a project supported by the National Cave and Karst Research Institute and the National Park Service. And they're going to show me how they're learning how Mammoth Cave is continuing to form. So grab a pair of hiking boots, a good headlamp, we're going on a science adventure. Okay, so the last time we were here, we learned that Mammoth Cave is made of mostly limestone that breaks down when it reacts with rainwater. That process is called a chemical weathering, when a chemical reaction breaks down the rocks. When those rocks break apart, all those little stones and pebbles get transported away by an underground river through a process called erosion. At some point downstream, all those sediments are dumped somewhere, and that's through a process called deposition. That's a bit of a word salad with all those terms, and while I enjoy a good salad, that's a lot to keep track of. So a good way to remember it is weathering detaches, erosion transports, and deposition dumps. You want me to do the dance, don't you? Roll the dance clip. Three, one, two, two three. three. Detach, transport, and deposit. Detach, transport, and deposit. Weathering, erosion, and deposition not only work together to form caves, they also influence each other. It's complex stuff, and as you can imagine, I got questions. So, guys, we know a bit about how chemical weathering breaks down the limestone with all the rainwater. How does physical weathering work here? So when you have water flowing through a cave or through a river, you are transporting sand and gravel and sometimes boulders through these rivers. And as you're doing that, these they're kind of hopping along the surface and bouncing and crashing into the rocks and things and they break off little bits of the rock that they impact. Into. So, so as these as water is eroding sediment away and it kind of smacks into the walls of the cavern and kind of burst, uh, continues to break stuff down, continues to weather weather stuff. Uh, so we've got there's actually a lot of sand here too, but I thought this cave was limestone. How did this sand get here? Well, uh, there's rivers on the surface up above us that are carrying all this sand from areas that have sandstone. And some of those rivers disappear into sinkholes and they become underground rivers that flow through these caves. So those rivers are, are depositing this sand uh, down here in, in, in the cave, even though this was at the surface. Uh, they're depositing, uh, the sand was uh, started at the surface and has been carried into the cave and then deposited here. So I guess what you guys, because what you guys are studying is how the surface erosion and weathering and deposition all impacts the cave. How does that work really? Well, uh, one of the major things is that uh, the caves are only here because the Green River has cut down like, uh, uh, like a knife through a layer cake uh, of the Kentucky geology. So the, so the Green River is kind of cut through all these layers of rock and it brings all this stuff kind of with it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cut down and the rivers that flow into the Green River, some of which uh, you know, still flow into the Green River, like the Barren River. Others now flow into this limestone layer and through the caves to the Green River. Now you guys are going down to the cave to take a, take a little bit of data today, right? Yes, we are. We're going to one of those rivers that Dylan was just talking about that comes from the surface and goes through Mammoth Cave and then exits out through a spring into the Green River. Well, that's pretty cool. Do you guys mind if I tag along? Not at all. All right, well, let's go. You guys lead the way. So one of the interesting things here is these, um, 
stations two and four, you know, they look like they're they're up on this ledge, and that it would be dry here most of the time. But this is the Roaring River Passage. This is a we're in an underground river channel right now that uh, floods to the ceiling sometimes. So yeah, you can really see the mud everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and right here. There's a bunch of mud. So this is um, this is the the template, and this is our our base level or our control level. Yeah, kind of your this constant from what you're measuring. Our from. constant. Yeah. Um, people call it a datum. Is another word for that constant level. And so, in a moment, I'm going to measure from this template down to the rock to see um, what the distances. guys, what has your data that we collected down in the cave, how has that told you how the cave is changing? So when we were down in Roaring River, we measured that the bedrock surface, that limestone floor of the Roaring River Passage, has lowered by 0.014 inches over the past year, which is about one one-hundredth of an inch. One one-hundredth of an inch. That's not that much, is it? <laughs> It doesn't really sound like that much, but if that happens for hundreds or thousands of years, it, it adds up. I mean, I can imagine there's, well, let's see, it'd be about a hundred years then to, for it to erode or for it to weather one inch, but if there's millions and millions of years, that's a lot of, that's a lot of weathering. Yes, it is. But that wasn't the only thing that we learned down there, that there looked like there was some really big changes over time. So it's not like, a, like these weathering patterns like happen like consistently across time, right? No, no, they're very punctuated. And uh, sometimes you have big floods that come through and rearrange all of the furniture in the cave passage, so to speak, all of the, all of the loose rocks and all of the sand, the, with the different piles of sand and stripped all the mud off of the, uh, of the fallen rocks that had been there before. Yeah, so it's almost like very little erosion, then boom, erosion events, and then really little erosion, then erosion events at some other time, right? Yeah. The Earth's surface is super dynamic. Things are always changing. And so even if this rock over here is only eroding by a hundredth of an inch each year, you know, there are still these catastrophic events. Sometimes things get buried under huge piles of sand. Things get carried away and moved someplace else. Dylan and Rachel, thank you guys so much for taking me in, into the cave and letting me tag along and we'll see how you measure how this incredible cave system changes over time. Like you said, it's super dynamic, but it's really, really cool. You're, You're welcome. very welcome. <laughs> and for those of you at home, see what you can find around where you live. See if the, you can find examples of erosion and weathering and deposition, how it's changing the surface of the earth near you. So we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.